Chinas, top EVs, and some total jokes. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. Hey, everybody. Give me a thumbs up in the chat if you can hear me. Very bullish on October 29th. What'd the stock do this uh, week? Anybody take a look? I, I don't remember. I don't remember if I checked. Let me see. Where are we at? Uh, oh, here we are. Look at that. It went up. That's great. 3.4% today and another 1.27% uh, after Hewers. Not bad. Five day, 17%. One month, 43%. Let's keep going. Six month, 57%. Year to date, 52 a year. My gosh. I don't know. Are you guys, uh, are you guys Tesla fans? Are you investors? Uh, how many shares you got? Drop it in the chat. I'd love to see. For that matter, say in the chat uh, when you got it and how many shares. Because that's where it's exciting. That's where it's exciting. Five year, why not? I mean, if we're going to be silly. And the market today, recently, all these metrics has been pretty silly. So let's talk, if we may. Yep, 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 sounds good. Okay, Audible indeed. Thank you so much. So let's take a look at some... Oh, by the way, uh, thanks to some new patrons. Uh, Mark, Dennis Felix, William, and Jesse. Appreciate you guys. More about that at the end. Another quick bit of housekeeping. Next week will be an hour earlier, uh, just to see if that works better, because 11 at night on the East Coast is kind of late. Kind of late. So let's talk about the EVs from China to watch, and we'll start with the serious ones. Foxconn reveals three new cars. Look at that. That's not bad. It looks... It looks pretty... Pretty predictable. It looks predictable. But if anyone can make something... On, on, on an electronic device, which really an EV is, Foxconn has the experience and the money. There's that, <clears throat> looking good, and a bus, which looks, if I may say so, like a bus. Li Xiang One, that's a good looking car. That's a good looking car. Uh, it's got good specs, uh, it's got good everything, and it's. Uh, I don't know, price right, 52,000-ish. Um, this could absolutely be a real contender. Um, I don't know, 52,000 though, for made in China. I just don't know, man. Uh, but worth watching, loaded with tech, looks good. Xpeng, perhaps you've heard of them. Sanding Monroe is of the belief that the um, that the Chinese brands are the ones to watch. And this video, I think, will support that conclusion. Um, these are good looking cars. This, of course, looks like a Model S dressed up as a Lucid Air for Halloween, uh, but that's fine. The price on them, though, uh, 23,000 to 28,000, that's gonna be compelling. That's gonna move some units if they can sell at those prices profitably, which they probably can. Neo, again, boy, is this design just the go-to for all electric sedans? Sure seems like it. It's got the same hips as a Model 3, the same front as a, as a Lucid, really. Yeah, oh, I agree. How much is the Neo? <laughs> I thought I'd highlighted it. Oh, let me get to it. My apologies. There we go. Uh, <laughs> 69,000. Nice. It's a compelling car. I don't know if it's super compelling at 69,000. But it is loaded with tech. And it is one to watch. And if there's one thing China's good at, it's <clears throat> lowering their production costs. Now, Mach-E enters production in China. One thing I will say for Ford, 
and really the legacy guys, is their time from announcement to production is good. They know how to get a car into production. Um, whether the cars are compelling and priced right is quite a different matter. I don't know that the Ford brand, or especially the Mustang brand, I mean really both, has any cachet in China. I would argue that they don't. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's something, although it is 43,450. Um, I don't know. Would you like to spend 43,000 for a China made Mach-E when the Model 3 is 38,000 and the Model Y is less? It's less. Would you would you spend more for a Mach E than a Model Y? That's why Jim Farley is recognizing that it's going to be a tough road. Ford's got to make some changes. They've got to get their they got to get their ship in order. Volkswagen delivered 5,800 ID electric vehicles in China in July. This is an older article, August. Yeah, it's a bit, a bit out of date. But they're struggling because the ID cars are not Teslas. And Herbert D's nuts did acknowledge that uh, in tweets. And they know they've got work to do. The ID cars, $31,000. That's not bad. It's not bad. But it's not enough to actually move units, which is bad, which is bad. ID6, I think we got the price highlighted here, 37 to 51,000. I mean, it's priced right. It's priced right. But Tesla's a premium brand and Volkswagen is just a brand. And I think that's going to work against them. Hmm. Hmm. Everyone still hear me all right? Good. Good. Geely Auto. Heard of them? I think they own Volvo now? Or Volvo? Yes. The M Grand. Boy, if you want a exciting looking car, the M Grand is not for you. That, that is it looks like a Chevy from the 90s. And hey, I owned Chevys in the 90s, I think. And the real problem, I think, with the M Grand, oh, 17,000. That's not a problem at all. 116 to 180 horsepower, and that's a Chevy from the 90s. That's a Chevy from the 90s. But at 17,000, the question is is the Tesla Model 3 twice the car? Because it's more than twice the price. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, we shall see. Regardless, these are brands to watch. A lot of these companies, if they were traded on U.S. stock markets, I would consider throwing a couple bucks in because I think they're pretty promising. These guys, China does stand too. If they can get things, if they can get their act together in terms of, um, uh, finished quality, they're absolutely going to eat our lunch. BYD E6. You've probably heard of BYD. They're a very big company. They make batteries. They make all kinds of stuff. This is a, a fine looking car. I'm going to move to this so I can see myself better. It's a fine looking car. It's a fine looking car. And the price on it, whoopsie doodle. And the price on it, 40,000. Ah. So what we're seeing is if you want to make uh, a serious electric car, it's going to cost about serious electric car prices, no matter where it's made, no matter who designed it. Yeah. It looks like a cross between a Volkswagen and a Volvo to me. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's nice, though. Again, one to watch. Keep your eye on BYD. Hi-Fi X. Look at this thing. Look at it. Suicide doors. Semi-falcons. This is neat. And it is... It is loaded with tech. It's loaded with luxury. And honestly, I think it looks cool. I think it looks cool. I think it looks like a better version of a, of a Cadillac CTS front end, a better version of a Audi wagon back end for the low, low price of a hundred to 121 grand. Boom. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money, but it's their first one and they're starting up market and they're moving down market. Just like a little company out of Fremont, California, you may have heard of their name escapes me. Oh yeah, Tesla. So now we get into the silly ones and this is where I'm having the most fun doing the research. This is where it got, hmm, this is where it got. I just, I just loved it. Of course, the Wuling Hongguang Mini sold over 40,000 in August. Look at this adorable little thing. It's $5,000. And not only is it the size of a casket, uh, it's a, uh, kind of an omen of things to come if you get in a crash, but they're working on it. It's gotten better. I'm told if you want to have some real fun, go look up crash tests of these mini Chinese vehicles. And it's terrifying. It's terrifying. I had a 2008, uh, yeah. Zen electric, which was, um, uh, uh, imported f uh, to Canada from, uh, it was a micro car MC two. And so if you want to see crash tests, I don't live in Canada. That's where they were imported to retrofitted, made into electric vehicles and then sold in the U S and Canada. The crash test you can see on that, you would look up micro car MC two and at 25 miles an hour, it looks like you're going to die. It's a cool car, cool car, very impractical. Very impractical. This is more practical. It's faster. Not sure that's a good thing. It's a, it's a lot more refined, but it's five grand. It's five grand. And even still at five grand, they're not really outselling the Teslas, which have more than five grand in profit per unit. But Again, these guys, they're going to soon be making bigger ones, which will be better and still very cheap. So let's get sillier. Who wants to get sillier? Alibaba. Look at that. A variety of electric cars for you choosing. Two grand for this cute little bastard. That's cool. This one, I forget the channel, but there's uh, somebody bought one. And actually took it to Sandy Monroe for him to look at, just to check it out. This is a thousand dollar car and it is stunning, um, that they're able to produce anything for that price. Um, now don't get too excited. You can't import it. Just shipping it here is going to cost more than that. Probably double. Look at this, a cute little mini for three grand. I don't know what this is. I assume it's not legit 4,200 for that. That looks cool. Um, but there's a lot of these. It's kind of endless. This little guy, clearly <laughs> a golf cart that's been given a shell, but still 1500 bucks. You can't get a golf cart in the U S for 1500 bucks. I don't know what this is. Clearly a Land Rover Chevrolet, <laughs> 4,200 bucks. That's a child's car. That's a toy, but there's a ton of these goofy things. This little three wheel jobby do 700 bucks. Now these companies aren't serious. Look at that. Two grand for this cute little pile of death on wheels. This awesome little roadster, 2,500 bucks. Oh, if these could be imported, they would take over all of the golf cart communities until they break. And then you'd have to throw them away because there's absolutely no parts for them. You'd have to find a, a bespoke repair shop. But the point here is that there are like oh, a $2,000 mini Cobra. How cool. 
How cool. The point is that there are hundreds of these companies in China making a variety of little, wow, that's cool, a, a variety of these. And um, we got to watch them. We got to watch them. Uh, to understand a best case scenario, I looked at this video of this um, of this cool little Chang Li uh, that uh, a guy imported in Florida. And he, uh, it, it's 2000, but it's not. He then put another um, thousand in upgrades to get a lithium battery instead of the lead acid. He put, um, it's got a hydraulic dump on the bed, which is ridiculous. That's insane that you can get that. Um, but then it cost him 2200 to import it, another 800 for the for the clearing fee, another, I don't know, thousand for the, for the import taxes, 500 bucks to get it shipped from the port to, to his property. All, all in, he's at about eight grand, which is crazy to think that 58% of your cost is, is actually getting it home. But it's, and also, uh, you can't get it street licensed. This is an off-road vehicle. This is, but it's very cool. And as soon as they get it sorted out, they're going to start importing these. It's just amazing. It's just absolutely amazing. So we will talk about that more in a second. We're about to get to the Q&A. Why don't we just get to the Q&A? Um, as always, let me take a quick second to thank my Patreons who get early access, bonus content, on ad-free experience, and to help but keep the channel running for as little as a buck a month. Can't do it without you guys, and I absolutely mean that. You guys mean a lot to me. Thank you. So, let's jump to the Q&A. If you got any questions, by all means, drop them. Reminder, next week we're going an hour earlier to try and make it a little better for the folks on the East Coast. Why not? Looks like dogs are winning the poll. Sorry, cats. The good news is cats are indifferent. They just don't care. If they saw this poll, they'd just knock it off the shelf. Okay. So we got a comment saying that one of the cars doesn't, don't know which one, don't remember, doesn't matter. Looks like a Lucid. Yeah, they kind of all do. They kind of all do. Oh, very early on, before, the, before we went live, there was a um, question raised about why I had two live streams that never went live a few days ago. And the answer is they were tests. We were doing a dry run. It looks as though I'll be doing a live podcast on Tuesdays at 4 p.m. Pacific time uh, in cooperation with Bear's Workshop. But don't tell anyone because it's a secret because we've still got some kinks to iron out. The first one or two might be a little rough. But we're going to have fun and we're going to just chat about EVs. And it won't be uh, just Tesla stuff because it's going to be simulcast on both of our channels so that uh, our fans can love each other. I was going to say get mad at each other separately, but we don't want to do that. That's not cool. Oh, and speaking of getting mad at each other but not doing that, um, I will be doing more of the responses to... Um, Ford F-150 uh, criticisms because I've still got a ton of that to go. I was just hoping to get my editor's son uh, able to get up to speed so he could work on them. So hopefully we'll be able to do that soon. Photo Gibbs sold my house a year ago, put 40000 into Tesla stock November of last year. Wow. 180000 today. Wow. Oh, 2020, not 2021. Gotcha. Therese, no mock e for me, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if it was substantially cheaper and readily available, whereas, you know, if I had to pay, boy, I don't know. There's a premium I would pay to have a Tesla over a mock e But everything has a price. Everything has a price. <laughs> Cybertruck tri-motor, I need you. Yeah. Test drove a Mach-E. Were it not for the Model Y, I'd call it great. But it does not stand up. You know what? Let's put this where you guys can see it. There we go. Dogs. Uh, 
If you have questions, ask them. Test drove a Mach E, were it not for, I'd call it great, but it just does not stand up and somehow costs more than the Model Y. Monroe likes the Mach E, yes, um, but he, I would say, has a Detroit bias, having worked in Detroit and for Ford for a long time. Um, he says it's the second best EV out there, but by a distant margin. Electrified says the Mach-E GT is fun. Uh, I believe it would be fun. I haven't, I haven't, I've seen them. I haven't driven them I, or been in one. Mm -hmm. Losing rental car, car sales to Tesla really hurts. Oh boy. Oh boy, does it. That's something we could have talked about. What a opportunity. I don't know if you saw my video earlier this week about the 20 reasons the Hertz deal just makes sense. And boy, does it. It is, and it, early in the chat, before we got going, um, we discussed how this is, Hertz is now the de facto test drive center and Carvana will become the de facto dealer network, getting tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of used Teslas in an exclusive arrangement. It's going to be, <clears throat> it closes a lot of the gaps that exist between Tesla's model and legacy auto. Hi-Fi looks like a matchbox car. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Uh, it looks like a transformer too. Maybe. Oh, uh, Wu Ling is GM. Uh, only sort of, only sort of, I think that's a financial arrangement or something. Um, how many Chinese EV models will be for sale in the U S in 2022? My guess is, uh, I mean, I wouldn't put it past Tesla to import some, but I don't think they need to. But if you mean true Chinese EV brands, I'm going to say it's still going to be close to zero, if not absolutely zero. Yeah. Who is this? Silly stuff. Zero. I believe it's also going to be zero. Um, Americans have a very distinct impression of what made in China means. And I think that would be an uphill battle to overcome, even if the car is good. And looking at the price of those made in China quality cars, by the time you import it, it's going to cost more than a Tesla. It's going to be a problem. Yeah. Sandy. Oh yeah. Sandy loves that little thing. I assume you're meaning that little red one we were looking at a minute ago. It's cool. It's cool. Um, and for the, and for the corners they were able to cut the gasket around the rear window is a hand applied bead of caulk. Oh, oh, so cool. Uh, Monroe put out a video on how Tesla was going to make a killing on insurance. I have not seen that yet. I will check that out tonight. Are other countries producing any silly little EVs besides China? I know India is um, not in the same kind of numbers. Um, I know Vietnam has a couple, uh, but I, but nobody is, nobody is the same kind of factory that China is in terms of production. What's going on with Nikola these days? They've got a couple trucks that they got in from Germany that they're testing now. One of them appears to be a fuel cell electric vehicle. So they're still moving forward. They're still moving forward. I'm still deeply concerned about their long-term prospects, but that's true of a lot of companies. I am, by the way, much less concerned about Rivian right now. Rivian, I think, is on the right track. They're expanding their factory. They've got customer deliveries out. <sighs> They're doing good. They're doing good. And they've got deep pockets backing them up. Question, is Tesla's current stock price above 1000 mainly FOMO, fear of missing out? Maybe, maybe, maybe. But the analysts have a lot of them upgraded be uh, beyond and above 1000 So maybe not. But boy, trillion dollars for a company that's only sold 2 million cars? And a lot of these analysts are saying they're not pricing in autonomy or energy. Wow. Well, if you price those in, now it's a $8 trillion company? Okay. I don't understand those guys, and I definitely don't understand the stock market. So as a reminder, no matter what I say, this is not investment advice. Haha, -ha, who is this became a Tesla-nair uh, today? 
congratulations. Oh. On social media, a lot of people lavish hate on Elon just because he's rich. Well, he exploited his workers. Mm, really? Because interns make $31 an hour. Um, the average way, the salary is $97,000, uh, and that doesn't even count the stock bonuses. There's a lot of people on social media, like myself, who defend Elon and Tesla, in part because we've researched the heck out of it and we know better, and in part because he's made us rich. He couldn't afford to buy this many shills. Even with his money, he would it would never happen. But he doesn't have to, because he's already made us all rich. And when I say rich, I'm not rich. My money's tied up in my, um, in my IRA. I can't touch it. But uh, it's grown. It's grown. And it's... There are people who put in, you know, $5,000 who now have enough to buy a house. I'd consider Ford if it wasn't for the dealership crap. I... I would buy a new car every two years if it wasn't for the dealerships. They're painful. They're painful. I'd rather get a root canal from a proctologist than go to a dealership. I'm anticipating the Model 3 will be swift on the heels of the Model Y in Texas. What do I think? I think you might be right. Uh, the tooling to switch from a 3 to a Y is not prohibitive. There's no reason they couldn't. The only reason is they w is if they chose not to. Now it could be what I think is more likely is that they would uh, close uh, is shift one or two of the lines in Fremont from Y to three once the Ys are being produced in sufficient numbers in Texas. I have not seen the busy daddy ass. Have I seen the article about the Maki -E battery cooling issues? Um, I haven't. I haven't. Cool. Cooling is difficult. It's difficult. What do I think the used Model 3s will sell for? Well, uh, a lot. A lot. Historically, again, this is covered in my, in my Hertz article. Historically, after a year or two, used rental cars sell for half. These will not be selling for half, I don't think. And Carvana is hoping to pick up um, sales to customers who don't qualify for a brand new car loan higher risk buyers, if you will, and that will keep the price up because a lot of people want them who don't qualify. <laughs> Please tell Tim to measure the bend. So there was a great video showing that, no, the Ford's Blue Cruise can indeed handle serious curves in the road. Look at this curve, he says, driving on what by all accounts is a straight road. <sighs> Flat earthers would look at that and go, nah, it's pretty straight. E even I think that's straight. Will any legacy auto ever get to profitable EV production at scale? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's just a matter of time. The batteries themselves will get cheap enough that it will be unavoidable. Uh, not because of them, despite them. Problem in the past, that Chinese cars never came close to meeting safety standards due to the current ones. So I'm going to say with 90% confidence, those $40,000 ones I showed you absolutely do meet current safety standards. And the $5,000 ones, you might as well just, just run in traffic. I mean, it depends how fast you run, but I'd say just jogging in traffic would be about equally safe. Um, there are, yeah, look up crash tests. I imagine we can find them on YouTube. I'm sure I am 90% confident they're safe. Are foreign-made EVs eligible for rebates in the proposal? Yes. <clears throat> Just like the Nissan Leaf has been all along, yes, they are. Rivian has a pile of money, right? Um, I'm not sure what their cash reserves are right now, but they have Amazon money. And even without the Amazon money, they have 100,000 Amazon orders ready to go, and that would allow them reasonable leverage in fundraising if, it, if they needed to. Um, and you know with Amazon, if the first 100,000 work, they'll buy a million. And if they work for Amazon, they work for everyone. Hmm. Foreign-made EVs are eligible except Chinese ones. I had not heard that. Because China does not have rebates for cars made outside of the country. 
I, I'm not, I'm not familiar with that. Been watching vids of Shenzhen compared, uh, comparing street scenes from 10 years ago versus now the EVs have made a difference in noise. I believe that. Uh, <clears throat> I saw a comment today that, boy, I'm looking forward to how much better cities will smell in uh, the future without all the electric cars. And to me, the bigger issue is the noise, especially for big rigs. The compression braking, if you live within a mile of a highway at night, it's gotta go. It's gotta go. Hmm. Elon doesn't draw a wage, just stock. He's doing okay though. Yes. And the, the reason he's the richest man in the world is because unlike the other CEOs, he hasn't drawn a wage, he's put it all in stock, and he hasn't sold the stock, but borrowed against it. If he'd sold little bits of stock along the way to finance his life and uh, his taxes, he might he would probably be not richer than Bezos. He's not only put everything he's got into it, he's also gambled everything he's got into it because he believes in the product and himself. So, well, he only makes money because of subsidies. No, he doesn't. Everyone, anyone gets those subsidies. You and me, let's make a car company. We get those subsidies. And we don't. <laughs> because even if we had the money, I'm not willing to risk everything on it. I don't have that confidence in myself. And I have confidence in myself. The only thing standing between Tesla and world domination is their ability to scale Shanghai, Austin, and Berlin in 2022. And beyond, because especially Austin and Berlin, there's enough land, that's where additional phases probably will go. Stephen Mark Ryan pointed that out. He said that there's, um, there's so much land there, rather than setting up tiny factories all over the world, why not just keep building in the places you've already got your supply chain set up? Gigapress lowers weight around 400 pounds, which will make LFP very practical. Do I agree? I do. I do. And LFP batteries are, are a known technology. They're easy to make. They're cheap. The elements are readily available. And they last longer. LFP batteries last longer. We talked about that last week. Jordan Gisagi from The Limiting Factor has a great video on it. Hertz will hold them longer than three plus years, and they will still sell them at a pretty price. The only, uh, so yes, the engine's not, the motor's not going to wear out, the battery's not going to wear out. There's a limit to how rough the interior can get, but for a lot of rentals, there's only one person in it, the business traveler. So only the driver's seat's going to get any wear and tear. Door dings, all that, we'll see. But I, I believe, Julius, thank you, I believe they will absolutely hold them longer than the current internal combustion cars, which will further lower the price of ownership for them. Kirk, good to see you. You are welcome, as always, my friend. Rob Markovich, do I think Tesla is being so hush-hush about Model 3 production at Austin and Berlin? Uh, no. No. I don't know. I don't know, but I think no. No. That's my final answer. No. Uh, I don't think they're being hush-hush. I think uh, it's just not necessarily in the cards. I think billionaires should pay income tax on the loans they take out on their stock. Why? It's not income, though. Um, they're going to pay it when they sell the shares to pay back the loan. The bank is already paying tax on the interest they receive. Um, would... Yeah. The only way that would pass is if the tax they paid was somehow not taken out when they sold, and that would create a situation where they would end up paying less tax now instead of more tax later. And I think that would be potentially... I think billionaires definitely should pay more tax, but taxing unrealized gains is dangerous and crazy. Uh, so, Julius, uh, 
they keep ICE cars an average of two years or until the warranty expires. Um, they, they like to sell them with warranty left because it makes them more, uh, it makes the resale a lot higher. Um, when I bought my minivan, it is a rental return. It had 48,000 miles. It had 12,000 miles left on the powertrain warranty, which gave me the confidence to buy it for a little under half price. It was about 15,000. I want to say it was 32 or 34 new. I don't remember now. But they like to have a little bit of warranty left. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, get your questions in because we are a boot to wrap up. OJ Simpson used to be the Hurt spokesman. Should we worry about Tom Brady now? No, because um, the old joke I heard was uh, they found some evidence at the scene of the uh, of the crime that exonerated OJ. It was a Super Bowl ring. Couldn't have been him. Couldn't have been him. Uh, no, I think Tom Brady's won enough uh, Super Bowls that uh, yeah, he's uh, not gonna not going to go on a murdering spree. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Rest in peace, Norm MacDonald. Oh. Okay. So guys, that was fun as always. Fun as always. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thanks, as always, to my Amazeballs patrons. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, what a week. What a week. If the stock pulls back, I'm still happy with it. I'm still happy with it. Because I'm in it for the long haul. Wow, did cats overtake dogs? Oh, no, dogs is narrowly ahead, but cats are closing the gap. If you want to hurry up and get in a vote for a cat or dog, you better do it, because that poll's going to close real fast. Photo Gib, you are welcome. Julius, good chat with you as well. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. We'll do this an hour earlier next week. And there may be an announcement coming about a Tuesday live podcast with Bear from Bear's Workshop. Because he's just the best. I really like him. And he's smart as heck. And he knows a lot of things that I don't. We have a, a good... Uh, the Venn diagram of our understanding and knowledge about <clears throat> technical things and EVs is not a perfect circle. So we can actually learn from each other, which is fantastic. Rob, you have a great weekend too. And yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and slap it to a close. So what did I miss or misunderstand? <clears throat> Leave me all your blind and brilliance and clever wisdom in the comments below. And as always, my friends, stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots on another Green Monday. <laughs>